Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Trapping with Jeeks. We're going to do a uh, flushing project. So, on a beaver, caught a nice, beautiful black beaver this year on my fall, on my winter line. Uh, we kept it back. We wanted to keep and preserve that. And I thought I would take the time to video that for you. Uh, we're going to take off the meat that's on the back side. And we're going to scrape that, of course, flush it. Uh, make it to where the leather the leather is just showing and then we're gonna also put that on the board and then start the drying process So in this video you'll find the scraping of the beaver hide in itself and the um, Boarding process so we're gonna get that started for you. It's real simple um, You can when, once this is all finished you can uh, send this off to a tannery Which is what I plan on doing with this piece Because um, it's gonna be dried product or you could ship it off to a fur buyer or you sell it locally if you desire to so it'll all right so the uh the items that you're gonna need to do this project is a flushing knife now i don't use a real sharp knife this is a cheaper knife i've got another knife as well both there's not a lot of uh not a lot of fat or meat to take off of the beaver uh the hide will be super super thick so it doesn't have to be terribly sharp, that's just my opinion. Uh, HD apron, which is in the kit code down below. A fur comb, hammer, gloves, and finishing nails so that we can put that on the board. Also have my beam in the background as you can tell. And then I have a board. Now you could just use a piece of plywood if you want. Um, mine of course has the, the, the lines on it, but uh, they also sell beaver hoops if that's something that you need. But a piece of plywood would work fine, especially if you're just going to tan it yourself. The the lines on this are kind of as a guide. So those are the items that we're going to be needing for this project, and let's get started. All right, folks. The, my first process, anytime I pick up furs, I comb it. You never know when you're going to have a cockle burr sitting on the bottom of your trap, your truck. You don't have to usually worry about it so much with beaver, but I always... My first process is always make sure that I, I comb it out. I just took this out of the freezer. You can you can go sideways like that, leather to leather, or you can roll it either way. But you, what you want to do is you want to go leather to leather for sure. And roll it up. You're going to store it any any period of time. But. That's how we got from there to here. Later on, I'll be able to do a skinning video for you guys. But uh, I've pretty well combed this thing to pieces. Really beautiful product. So beautiful. Black beaver. This is the first time I caught a black beaver. Got it on video. And I'll be able to try it. I'll click it on the end. But there we go. Got that all ready to go. And it's nice and clean. That's that. Alright, so on the beaver, you'll see there's this big membrane right here in the middle and usually where I like to start when I do my scraping processes up around the head I'll cut out some of that lip we'll shorten up the legs a little bit but this is just my opinion this is how Jinx does it I'll, a lot of times I'll start in here on the belly and then I'll roll that membrane over I'll use my beam to help with that process and as long as I keep rolling over the fat it'll collect it'll come off there it will look really nice so that's just a suggestion that I have for you if you want to start it here on the belly I cut a little bit of the meat around the, the front part there alright here we go here's my beam and I'm, I'm not I'm not just doing I'm just doing one piece today for you so I don't really feel like I have to go and really dress the floor up or nothing Real cheap necker knife. It's not even a necker knife. It's super cheap. I'm going to start in right here. And just kind of roll it back. The nice thing about a beaver hide, guys, is it's super, super strong. So it's not thin. The leather's not thin. And you just kind of keep moving it back. See, I'm going towards the head. I'm just kind of letting that fall. Once 
you get underneath that membrane, you just push. I'll do raccoons for you guys. And do everything later on. Right now, I'm just kind of doing this for for you. I had somebody who was asking for one of these. So that's what we're doing. You get all that, uh, that grease. This is the grease part. Get all that off the edges right there. Make it nice and clean. It'll dry so much better. And if for some reason what you don't get off, you can always scrape off with a spoon in the drying process. My knife is not real sharp. I'm just getting underneath that fat. You don't have to have a terribly sharp knife. But that's just my opinion. I know some people say you have to. But... And then all I do is just kind of roll it along my, be my beam. keep my beam clean that way it doesn't stick to the fur that's just me though a lot of times when I do a coon I like to drop it all at once that's just... you can see how much nicer that looks drop this down the middle I gotta make a cut though I'm nearing, nearing towards the tail. Usually the tail is kind of a trickier part because the fat is really thick still. I don't want to cut into my beam. As long as you kind of get underneath it and kind of keep pushing it'll come off. This is usually where I put nicks in my beam. Because everywhere else it just kind of comes right off. And I don't have to really worry about this piece right here because that's along the bottom of the tail. I'm going to trim that anyways. It's coming off pretty clean. Just get underneath it and push. Alright, so I got that half done. So basically I just started at this one. Now I'm going to have to go around this, this leg. I didn't do that one as well. That's the front leg. I got all that meat and membrane off the back. It's pretty nice and clean. And uh, it's been a little while since I've done this, so I'm not doing this every day like I, I used to. And then it's clean along the edges, which is important. And then I'm gonna do the other side next. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna get around the leg a little bit better right here. Just like that, see? Let's see uh, just get it down to the get it down to the leather side and roll it over the top try not to get into your beam too much if you can help it at least that's the way I do it yeah, rolls over pretty good 
Personally, when I go to flush and I like to flush it with just a little bit of rose. It's just how I, I, it just comes off better than when it's milky. It's been sitting out a long time. I like to freeze it first. It just seems like it flushes so much better. I don't know why. I think it has, like I said, I think it has to do with it just sitting around getting kind of milky. It rolls so much better. Be careful with the ears and the meat around the neck. I don't really too much worry too much about that, but it is what it is. You get soft spots later on. You could, like I said, spoon it out, spoon it out on the board. So, all right, I'm gonna do the last half of it right here. Started at that other leg, work my way down, and then I'll come back. We'll dress that up. It's pretty simple. It's not too terribly difficult. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Especially when you get into like coyotes and a lot of your thinner, thinner leather product. And you hit it and it's just beavers are really pretty pretty simple to do. It's good a good one to kind of learn on, in my opinion. Or raccoons are good too. Just simply because the hide is so much thicker. You have to push a little bit, but uh, it comes off pretty good. So you see there, I got all the edge. I got all the fat off the edge there. So it looks nice and clean. Same way here too. I don't know if you can see that or not. Nice and clean and white. And, uh, I'm gonna get around the head area. And be done. Right, so I went do a little recap for you guys. The meat was right here in the middle. I started at this leg here and it worked my way in. And I pushed it down down the middle. I had to cut it with my knife, and I basically am rolling it in this direction. Then when I got down to here, I went ahead and brought it up. To the middle part of the beaver hide excuse me and then i continued to go straight down the middle of the hide and rolling it off this right side and that was pretty much it then i started and i did the other side so i started the leg and i went and i got the rest of it and went all the way down to the bottom piece and i rolled it over the edge I made, made mention earlier, if you're listening earlier, you can see there's a little bit of fat needs to come off. It's usually the tail, the very end piece, is probably where I, where I make nicks in my in my beam. Because it's super, super thick on that back pack, that back piece there. But that looks pretty good. So, then after I did that, see, I'll close that up for you. It's just the bottom. That's fine. All the sides are super clean. You can kind of see that, hopefully. It goes all the way around like that. And then I went and I took and did around this top piece. Wow, well, you can see that. And it worked around both arms. And I flipped the head this direction, like this. And I went over the top of that, that head piece. There's still some meat that's going to be attached to that. I'm, I'm okay with that. This will get hard. There really isn't much here anyways. And it'll be fine once it goes through the tannery. I'll trim up a little bit of these arms. So see, they're kind of long. I'll do that on the board. That is your finished product. All the meat, all the grease is gone, and we're ready for the board. Pretty exciting.